Hey everyone, so welcome back. Um, I left last video off at chapter, in the middle of chapter 28. This time I am almost done. <laughs> I know, I just finished the book already, right? But it's, um, you know, I got other hobbies and stuff, so it, reading doesn't consume my life. But I am at 96% and the reason I've been hesitating is because I kind of wanted to do a video right right before it ends just so that I um, have a little bit of room to predict even just a little, even just that last four percent because um, I'm sure there's still mysteries and stuff to be solved in the last few chapters but actually the last two chapters I guess that's what it is right now but for the last video I kind of framed the whole video around characters and how I liked them or didn't like them, what aspects were exciting and what aspects were not exciting. Mostly, mostly what I liked about them. But this time, since the plot has picked up considerably, I think that it might be better to discuss this part in plot points rather than as than about people. So, as a as a very rough summary, as a very light summary, I think we are in Ninglemen, our I we got to Ninglemen with Joshua and Benevik is now getting, oh, by the way, he lives. I'm so excited, he lives. <laughs> I don't know if he, I didn't know if he lived or not in the last video, but I'm so happy that he does because I don't know, I, don't, I think half the story would have died without Benevik. But, uh, so we're in Nanglemond and Joss was there and then we find out that Maria is in fact the princess, totally called it, I'm so excited. <laughs> and, um, Although who is that other younger woman then? Like who is that other little little girl that was left at jo Jaloi? It's exciting. I don't know. Uh, and so we were, we're in Nanglemon for a little bit and then there's like a little band that gets together. It is kind of reminiscent of the fellowship, but uh, <laughs> complete with the warring um, races, you know, like the, the Rimmer's, Rimmer's Guard men i don't know what's the plural plural of rimmers rimmers men but them and then the trolls like they're just like the elves and the dwarves and not just like they they have different nuances of course but it is it is uh very reflective of the fellowship of the ring but um yeah so they make the band and then they go off to the uden tree or Ur urmsheim and then back in Ninglemond, they have their own little adventures there. Uh, Yarnoga, Yarnoga makes his way to Ninglemond and like kind of uh, makes the whole band necessary to go find Thorn. And then, um, what, what? There's the other Rimmersman that's hunting them. I don't exactly, Ingen ja Jaggernaut, I think, yeah. or. I don't know, I'm probably getting his name mixed up with Jack, with Juggernaut, but like Ingen is also on his way there. I think they, de they defeat him or they, they at least um, overcome him somewhere. And so then they go off. Nengleman has this huge fight with Elias because Elias is all of a sudden al already there. Of course, there's this little side thing of Le uh, Duke Leobardus. He sends a hundred men ahead of his whole company so that they can help against Elias. But Elias is obviously way pow more powerful than Nanglemond is, but some for some reason he pulls back. I still don't know why. I'm sure that in the last 4% of the book, I will figure it out. But um, uh, right now I'm left to stew in it and like wonder exactly, oh my gosh, what is Elias doing? Um, I did get to the point where Elias is meeting the goddess, I think that's what she is, with the silver mask, and it's all been very fast in, in a flash of a pan, really. <laughs> the, the, the plot really has picked up. Okay, so yeah, Ninglemon has been attacked. I think I'm getting the order of this right. If I'm not, that's okay. Um, you know the order because you've already read it. Um, and then... The company finds the tree, the Uden tree, and it's like, whoa. <laughs> I actually ha had a little bit of a hard time 
what is it conceptualizing the tree because it I don't know why but it feels like a waterfall doesn't look like a tree to me and I've looked up a few um, pictures online and it helped a little bit but I guess maybe the splashes from the bottom of a waterfall could look like the branches of a tree I don't know I'm still having a hard time conceptualizing it but that's okay I mean it's, I just have to know it's a big huge ice formation and it's really intricate and it's really um, kind of dangerous uh, they have to whisper or they have to really take care of how loud they are when they're around this tree because you know any any second you know, a little twig or a little branch of this ice formation could just release and make an avalanche uh, and cover them up then they find the cave with all the dead people and the guy offering up thorn uh and it's so funny that they don't connect that of course it's going to be thorn like what else could have killed these guys but I, but I, I know that i'm just a reader that has read these tropes before and so i'm like okay well there's a whole room of people who died mysteriously and a, and a, an object that's also mysterious they're connected but it was just really fun to guess right like um i've guessed wrong on this kind of stuff before and it's just it feels so nice to be able to be like okay i know what this is i knew maria's the princess and i knew that simon was going to pull the thorn out was going to pull pull the sword, the sword thorn out and wow and i like the look of it too you know in my head it's a long black sword with like a rainbow kind of uh shining hilt or is that what that's called the handle of the of the sword yeah i read fantasy totally <laughs> but um yeah so that's the summary of where i am right now I'm, like I said, I'm pretty far, but the whole reason why Elias is is uh, folding basically his hand is still a mystery to me. I'm I'm excited to know what it is. Um, I mean, obviously he's got this these like devious plans behind the scenes, and it's like, what did he give up, and what was his this deal with this deity with the with this Unuki? No, I don't know this thing. Anyway. So that's my rough summary. I know it sounds like that should be the end of the video, but it's not. I, there are a few po points in the summary that are in the plot that I really liked. Um, so first of all, yay, Benedict lives. Like I said, he's half of the book to me. Um, I totally called Maria as, as princess and I'm going to read a little bit off of my notes because I can't remember everything that I want to say because I'm a little slow. That's all it is. There is to it. I mean, I just, uh, I, I find myself in conversations wanting to say things and then forget it by the time I get the chance to say it. So I need some notes. All right. Um, I like how the politics have kicked in. I have a little bit of a problem following politics sometimes, but this one was okay. Like, I think I can follow, you know, these two brothers don't like each other. And then there's like these Dukes, um, I think I know which ones are on which side. Uh, yeah, poor is, is Grimner and his dukedom. That, that was horrible what happened to him. But um, most notably, I liked the intro to Jiriki. Now, I kind of expected when they got to the Sithi, yeah, singular is Sitha and many is Sithi, right? <laughs> okay, yeah. So uh, when they got to the Sithi place, Simon recognized him, and I'm pretty sure that Jiriki saw him too, but I kind of expected, you know, a little bit more acknowledgement, like, oh, that guy saved my life. <laughs> I expected that, but I started to think about it again. I'm like, no, I think his reaction is more realistic because he is a prince. He's supposed to be uh, leading a people, and he's not, and while extreme emotions are just part of being a being, you know, because he's not human. He's a Sithi. Yeah, he's one of the Sithi. Sithi. He's a Sitha. <laughs> and he, so he needs to like make an example of himself to his people. But he also might hold a little bit of resentment 
because you know, like he gave him the white arrow. He even said, I did not think that I would actually see you again. <laughs> and the way I read it was like, oh, this was a debt that maybe other Sithy were gonna, I don't know, like fulfill, like, I don't know. Or he just thought, oh, this young man is not gonna really amount to much, so I'll just give him this and he can have fun with that. But I don't know, like I, maybe it was just a formality because the other Sithy did not want, uh, you know, like they were they were probably felt conflict, conflicted about Simon um, because they were going to put him in chains, but they couldn't because of the formality of the arrow. Um, but I'm sure they, like without the arrow, they would have been like, no, he's in chains. You know, you saw how they, really clapped up everybody else. Um, yeah. And Jiriki's perspective on Inaluki. Inaluki is really interesting. You know, he's like, yeah, he's evil to you guys. He's evil for you guys. But in my perspective, humans are not the greatest beings to ever be either. Um, I mean, with the rise of humans, uh, lots of other beings have disappeared. And I mean, you could reflect that back into reality, you know, we're, we're, the, we're the cause of a lot of strife in the world. But I don't want to go, I don't want to make, I don't know, I want to escape. I don't want to go into the real world. Anyway, before we go away from Neglamon too much, um... For Sheva, for Sheva, like Joss was lover. Um, she was. Simon thought that she looked like Miriamel. Simon thought that she looked like Miriamel. Now I don't know how close. Mormond? No, not Mormond. I don't know how close. Miramel's home country is to Vorsheva's country, but I don't know. Are they related? I mean, I, I had this pet theory that she was actually Miramel's mother, that Joshua kind of squirreled away <laughs> and told his brother, oh, she died. Oh, no. And then she, like all of a sudden she's free. But uh, from her accent and from, you know, everyone being able to see her, probably not. It's probably not Mary Ella's mother. Although she did kind of act family like to Miriam L when she sent her off to her uh, mother's family. Um, yeah, that, it, it's really strange. I know that's just a little detail. Like I said, I get caught up in little details. I can't help it. You just, you don't, you never know when they're going to um, pay off. So I'm keeping my eye on Vorsheva or Joshua's lover. Um, oh, one thing about Binibic and dreams, he is oddly disinterested in Simon's. Like he, like characteristically, he's the one basically kind of ambassadoring the whole dream world. He, he he talked about his master going into the dream world. He was kind of the introduction of the dream world. And now all of a sudden he's not really interested in dissecting Simon's dreams on the way to Thorn. And I just find that very uncharacteristic. <laughs> Imagine that. I just find it very weird. And it might be that he's busy. <laughs> He's got a whole group of people to lead and he needs to get them over. He's got this mission. He's got to take care of this mission. But uh, of course, there's a nagging um, sense that Simon's dreams are very important. And it just seems off that Benabig is not, Benabig is not listening. Going back to Jeriki, him showing Simon true summer feels like something that's really not allowed. <laughs> like, a, like it's a breach of something because maybe an alliance of 
Dr the Dr the the Sithy <laughs> and other people, but like he, he looks back at Anai and he's like, "Hey, is this okay? Or I'm gonna do it." And it feels like, "Oh, what is this? Why why would showing Simon True Summer be so bad or be so hmm, feel like feel like it's uh, breaking something? I don't know, but it's it's interesting to me." So I'll be keeping my eye on that too. So I really liked how Simon pulled the sword out of the, uh, you know, he pulled the sword out and no one noticed. No one noticed at all because they're all busy fighting and Simon's not like, hey, I've got the sword. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's very reflective of what it would be like for <laughs> them to... Uh, the situation's realistic because they're fighting. You know, they're not gonna... They're not gonna like looking... They're not gonna look at Simon all the time because they, they've got people that are trying to kill him. Um, but then Benefic surprised it like, wait, you got it? Oh my gosh, what's going on here? <laughs> And and I like how he does not insist on Simon fighting with it immediately because I mean that's my first instinct but Simon has no he has a little bit of an idea but he does not know everything and he oh my gosh he's still a, a young man you know he's still not very he's he's not he's not a swordsman yet so it makes sense that he would hang back even though he's got a huge powerful sword. That's about where I've stopped. I, I think the, the dragons have come out. I mean, I think, they, I know they have. The dragons have come out and they have kind of wreaked havoc on the whole thing. But that part was a little bit hard for me to visualize and I might go back and over and reread it because I don't know exactly what happens because I'm really bad at reading action. And, okay, I'm gonna take a stab at guessing what Elias is, do is doing with, you know, pulling back. I think that maybe he, you know, after making, he, he finds that after making this deal with the goddess, that maybe she, maybe he's giving up Joshua. Maybe he's like saying, hey, take my brother. You know, it, there's probably a deal where it's like give one family member up and you can have this. And he's probably, and Elias is probably desperate enough. Like, hey, okay, fine, take my brother. Take my brother and, you know, if the deity does, then he saves that much, that many people for the next battle. Because even without Joshua, I'm sure the resistance, <laughs> the, the resistance is going to, um, is going to pre not prevail but persist because there is enough hostility towards Elias and resentment towards Elias I think even without Joshua heading everything um, but that's my stab I will be back in another video with the very very end <laughs> and probably possibly a few things I've learned from reading this book all right See you guys next time.